Hi everyone, I'm back again and this time I'm here to do a video for you guys about how you can take better photographs at home. Now we've been in lockdown for a few weeks. We've got another week at least, maybe a bit longer. Now what I've been doing is I've been making a point of taking a lot of photographs at home of my family, of my pets, of nature, you know, going on walks and stuff. And what I wanted to do was just use some of that experience that I've had over the last few weeks and, and take out some of the tips that I can give to you guys so you can take better photographs at home. Now the first tip that I've got for you is simply keep on shooting. Now we've got the ability to be able to do it. Admittedly with my cameras, a lot of the photographs that you're going to see on this video are uh, taken from my camera, but your mobile phones are so awesome these days and you can literally take amazing photographs of them. So you need to make sure that you are taking lots and lots of photographs and the more photographs you take, the better the photographs will be. You know, you could take a hundred photographs and in amongst that hundred photographs, there could be one absolutely awesome photograph that you would love to show to the world. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, the photographs that I put out are a few of many, many, many photographs that I take. So a lot of them don't even see the light of day, but we've got the opportunity to take many, many photographs. So my advice is to keep on shooting. And if you've got a moment happening in front of you, shoot it as much as you possibly can. But what I really want you to do is make a real conscious effort to want to make and create better photographs. Now, the more you think about it, the more it will become a natural reaction. When something happens, you know, say your pet's messing around or, you know, you've seen some awesome light coming through the window and, or you're out on a walk and you see something amazing, you know, your first instinct is to get the camera out and take a picture straight away. Now, if you've got it in your mindset that, you know, that is your mission, you don't necessarily have to do anything. You just have to have it there in your mind. So when an opportunity arises, you're ready, you're there with your camera, you're ready to get the shot. Because you know that some of the best photographs are the ones that you really don't plan for at all. The main thing I want to talk about in this tip is the opportunity that you want to capture. Like the, there may be something going on in front of you that you, you want to get and you've got to go and, like I say, you've got to get your phone ready. If you haven't got it ready, you've got to get it ready and you've got to go and get that moment. But if you miss that moment, it can be quite frustrating, especially if you try and get those who are in that picture, if it's people or pets, to do the same thing and they don't do it. It can be quite frustrating. So my advice is if you do miss the moment, just carry on shooting through it. Just hang around and just wait to see what happens next. Because generally the thing that you've seen would have been awesome, but what comes after it could be a million times more awesome. So I've got an example of this. So this opportunity came about by eating lunch one day. Um, I had my camera on the table and my son was sat opposite me eating his lunch. Now I noticed just above his head was the portrait photograph that we've got of him in our living room. Now it's quite a funny photograph of him. So I thought if I can get a picture of him in the foreground blurred out, but you can sort of make out that it's him. And then in the background, you can see the picture of him. So you can see that it's him. So it's almost like a picture of two halves, really. You've got what's going on in the foreground. He's having his lunch, but you can't really see what it looks like. But then you've got the real Aaron up on the wall. This is the, who this guy is. Now, I kept shooting. I tried different, slightly different angles, uh, a few different takes on it, but it just wasn't working. So I pretty much gave up. Um, I put the camera down and I carried on eating my lunch. Now within 30 seconds, my wife comes and sits down next to me and she starts eating her lunch. Now, Aaron gets up, comes over and basically says to her, feed me. Now, before I know it, this thing, this opportunity has just appeared in front of me. Aaron's being fed, being spoon fed like a baby and I've got my shot. I've got the shot that I was trying to get in the first place, but actually this one's a lot better. You know, there's a lot more action going on. There's, there's actually something happening that I had, had no intention of of capturing whatsoever and I actually think it's a much much better photograph so you know there was so much luck involved in getting that image I just had to wait for it I've got a couple other examples here as well now this one is a picture of his horse we were out on a walk one day this beautiful horse was was stood by the gate uh, we were walking past now obviously I'm gonna get a couple of pictures of the horse but then he started scratching himself up against the post and honestly it was so funny because he was really showing us all of his teeth and it was such a such a fantastic opportunity so luckily I was able to get it same with this uh, dandelion yeah we've been trying to get these photographs quite a lot of the boys blowing the, the dandelions and it wasn't until I was editing this photo that I realized what is that and this earwig had been living up inside this dandelion and it flew out. Now, I didn't know it was there. I didn't even know it was there until we got home and I started editing it. But again, it's total luck. So, you know, don't discount a moment, carry on shooting through it and the luck will be there. Okay, tip number three is about light and shadows. Now I could talk hours about light and shadows. You speak to any photographer and you know they'll tell you that photography is just all about those two things, light and shadows. So I'm gonna talk about something in particular and that is window light. Now window light is something that we all have, 
but the point of this is to um, to have a look around your house and just to see where the light comes in at different parts of the day. Now there's two different lights I'm gonna talk about here. The first one is a nice soft light, which you're gonna get when the sun isn't coming directly through the window. Now if you can find a room that's dark at one side, but all the light coming in at the other. Now if you were to position maybe a pet or, an, or just any object or a family member by that window, you're gonna create some lovely shadows by having that light coming in from one side and having the shadow on the other. You know, it really creates shape and it really gives some depth to your images. You'll find that whenever you see a really, really nice picture of someone, it generally comes down to the lighting about how good it will look. Obviously there's a lot of, you know, there's lots to else to take into account as well, but the lighting is key. The other type of lighting I'm gonna talk about is when the strong sunlight is coming through your window. Now, that tends to be in the morning, you know, if you can find some, or in the evening, if you can find some morning light, especially coming through your window, you know, look out to see where it's landing, you know? And again, if you can, if you can take the opportunity to move someone or something into that light to try and get a better shot, then do it, you know? Or just get lucky and just wait to see what, what happens. In this example here of my cat, the light was actually coming through one of the windows behind her where we had the blinds open. It was hitting a mirror on the wall and it was coming back and hitting her in the face. Now I was lying in bed at this point. I had a camera next to the bed because you know you never know for an opportunity. So I was able to get this picture of my cat where the light was just falling on her perfectly. So yeah, make use of light that's coming through your window. Make use of the light and the dark and try to find the in-between. Now what you'll find is on your mobile phone, when you're taking photographs in really harsh light conditions, on most phones, what you can do is if you click on the screen where that brightest part is, it will bring it down to a to a um, to an even exposure. So it will bring everything else down into shadows. Now you can play with it generally by dragging your finger up and down. I'm talking about most phones, mainly iPhone here. But if you can do that, then you can really adjust where those shadows, how far those shadows go. Um, so it's well worth having to play with that. Okay, tip number four is quite an interesting one. Now, I've got this little phrase about, be the thing that it is you're trying to shoot. So for instance, if you are shooting your cat, you know, Think about where your cat sits, think about where your cat moves around and try to get down on their level. Now this is this is no tip, you know, they say about pets and, and animals, you know, try to get on their level uh, rather than shooting down at them because that's the way we see them all the time. But if you can get down on their level or even lower and try to in, become of something that they're interacting with even, you know, you're gonna get really truly unique perspectives. Now for instance, you know, let's have a look at my son Adam on his laptop. I'm taking the photograph from the perspective of the laptop. If you look at Aaron cooking eggs for his mum, I'm taking the picture from the cooker just to give a completely different perspective. You know, if I was gonna shoot myself looking in the fridge, I'd probably take the photograph from looking inside the fridge. You know, going back to pets again, think about where they would take a photograph from. I know it sounds crazy, but just think about it. My cats like to patrol along the back of the sofa. You know, they'll sit down then. So I'll take a picture from on top of the sofa looking across. You know, if my, if my kids are interacting with the pets, I'm gonna look at it from my pet's point of view. Get down low on the floor. You know, this picture of Aaron here. This is Aaron making some flapjack. But this is also Aaron making some flapjack. And all I've done is I've gone to the other side of the room and just gone a bit lower. The same picture, completely different shot. So my main point of this tip is don't be afraid to change your perspective on things. If something's happening in front of you, you know, shoot it from every single angle. Think about the light, think about where you're shooting from, and I promise you, your photographs will change dramatically. So my main takeaway from this tip is don't be afraid to get close, don't be afraid to change perspective, and just think about things a little bit differently. You know, don't take the obvious shot. Get down low or, you know, shoot between things. Just try something a little bit different. Okay, my last tip from this is going to be about editing your photographs. Now, you don't need any fancy software. Mobile phones have seriously good apps on them. Um, the one that I use the most is called Snapseed. Now Snapseed, there are better ones. I just find that Snapseed works really, really well, really fast to edit a photograph. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you down onto my phone and I'm just gonna show you quickly how you edit a photograph. Okay, so here we are in the Snapseed app on my phone. Now, what I've got here is a picture of me and the family. We went out for a walk uh, just around the back of our house and we found this awesome wild garlic. So I thought this would be a great picture to do a quick edit on the phone. Now, at the bottom, when you open the picture, you have presets that are like Instagram filters. Now I'm gonna look past them and I'm gonna click on tools in the middle of the screen at the bottom. Now this brings up lots of fancy tools where you can mess around with the picture, but we're gonna concentrate on tune image in the top left-hand corner. 
Now, when you go into the tune image, if you swipe up and down on the screen, it brings up these different options. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through these options one by one and make little adjustments just to try and make the picture pop a little bit more. So first of all, I'm gonna start with brightness. Now, by swiping right, it goes brighter, left, it goes darker. So I'm gonna bring the brightness down a little bit for now. Um, move to contrast. I'm gonna add a bit more contrast, give it a bit more of a punch. Same with saturation. Bring those colors out a bit more. Ambience changes the structure of the whole picture. Um, personal preference on this one, I'm gonna bring it down. I mean, you can bring it up to bring out more from the shadows, but I'm gonna bring it down. And highlights, I can bring up. Shadows, I can put down. Warmth, do you want a warm picture? Do you want a cool picture? I'm gonna leave it be. Okay, so that's a very, very, very quick edit. Now in the top right hand corner, if you click on that little button, that's before, that's after, that's before, that's after. Now I've overcooked this picture a little bit. It is a bit over-processed. And don't fall into the trap of over-processing your images because they can look fake. Try to keep it looking as real as possible, but with some punch. It's too easy to take it too far. So if you start ending up having colors that just weren't true to the eye, that look a little bit artificial, then rein it in a little bit because you want to make sure that it still looks true to how it looked on the day. Just with, again, just with that little bit of punch. So there you go, so I'm happy with that image. I'm gonna click on the tick in the bottom right hand corner. And then when I click on export in the bottom right hand corner, save a copy, and that will save a copy to my phone. I've still got the original image. So if I wanna re-edit it again, I've still got the original there to play with. However, I've got a copy of it now with my edit. So there you go, it's as simple as that. Snapseed, really, really cool app. Okay, so I hope you found these tips useful and I appreciate it. it was a lot to take in. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to me babble on. I hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, let me see what you've got. It'd be great to see what images you, uh, you take as a result of this. So please do tag me in any and it would be great to see them. Okay, nice one. Take it easy guys. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.